Hello everyone and welcome to EduSurge Clinics where we discuss some key topics relevant to common medical and surgical practice. So last time we had seen ERAS protocols and we had seen the general ERAS protocols and at the end of the video I had said that we will be looking at ERAS protocols that we follow in liver surgery. So I am Dr. Gunjan Desai, HPB surgeon in Mumbai. And this video highlights some of the ERAS protocols that we use in liver surgery in routine practice. So in this topic, we are going to recap the ERAS guidelines. For those who have not seen the previous video, please have a look at that video. I will put a link in the description below. And we are going to see some of the modifications that have occurred in the 2022 guidelines of ERAS society pertaining to liver surgery in the pre-op, intra-op and the post-op phase. So we are going to see how these changes apply to liver surgery specifically when it comes to ERAS protocol standardization. And we are going to see the importance of audit. As I already said, ERAS is an attempt to standardization, which is the first step for continuous improvement in practice. So we have already seen this slide. So for those who have seen the previous video, you can jump to the next slide. But just to summarize, the ERAS protocol recommends some of 15 to 16 components that span across the pre-operative, intra-operative and the post-operative care of the patient. It is also known as multimodal rehabilitation. In the pre-operative period, it's very important to counsel your patient properly. Avoid prolonged fasting by using pre-operative carbohydrate loading the night prior to surgery and two hours prior to surgery appropriate antibiotic and thromboprophylaxis and selective bowel prep. We don't need bowel prep in liver surgery. Intraoperative points include adoption of minimally invasive surgery, smaller incisions, maintenance of normothermia by using bed warmers and inline warmers, fluid management using goal-directed fluid therapy using stroke volume cardiac output or the traditional CVP, appropriate analgesia and beginning of post-operative nausea and vomiting prophylaxis at induction. Post-operatively, the important points include early mobilization of the patient, preferably at least by the next day in when we are discussing liver surgery, not placing the nasogastric tube or removing it on the first post-operative day, remove drains as early as possible, avoidance of opiates and NSAIDs and early resumption of diet. So these are roughly the components that can be applied to all surgeries. Now we will see some of the modifications that are required when we are discussing application of ERAS guidelines in liver surgery. And this is based on the article published in 2022. So in the preoperative phase, Apart from the points that we have already discussed, some important points that have been updated include prehabilitation. What that means is optimizing the patient for surgery. The guidelines highlight high-risk patients as elderly patients that is more than 65 years of age. Malnourished, these can be nutritionally depleted or obese patients. Patients who are on prolonged smoking and alcohol consumption and patients with psychological issues. All these patients need nutritional optimization, physical optimization. They may need chest physiotherapy, nutritional supplements, psychological rehabilitation. And the duration for prehabilitation has been quoted as four to six weeks by the ERAS guidelines 2022. The interventions can be physical interventions, physiotherapy, nutritional changes and rehab therapy and counseling for smoking and alcohol de-addiction. Another important point when it comes to liver surgery specifically is biliary drainage. The guideline recommends that the bilirubin should be less than 3 mg per dl or 50 millimoles per liter. What we prefer in our unit is for a right hepatectomy, this is important that the bilirubin is less than 3 mg per dl. But for a left hepatectomy, we can extend the indication to bilirubin up to 5 to 8 mg per dl depending on other factors taken care of. Now, I have an entire video on preoperative planning of liver surgery and you can have a look at that video. I will put in a link to the description below. But 
for biliary drainage in pre operative period as per eras protocol the guideline is less than 3 mg per dl smoking and alcohol as i have already discussed they recommend 4 to 8 weeks of cessation of smoking and alcohol and rehab programs to support this intervention now this is a new point and we have not been using prednisolone in pre operative period but the guideline recommendation is use of a single dose prednisolone 30 mg per kg we have been using ponvi prophylaxis at induction that is post operative nausea and vomiting prophylaxis this prophylaxis entails the use of two antiemetic agents with the first agent being dexamethasone starting at induction 4 to 8 mg iv as far as medication in the pre operative phase is concerned it is very important to identify if the patient is on blood thinners and stop the blood thinners 3 to 4 days prior to surgery with overlapping unfractionated or low molecular weight heparin as per the indication of blood thinners another important point is to avoid long term angiolytics midas or a short term angiolytic is okay avoid nsaids and avoid opiates nsaids can increase kidney injury in liver liver disease patients and opiates can increase drowsiness in these patients especially if the patients are high risk these drugs need to be avoided so these are some of the pre operative interventions in addition to the standard eras recommendations that are there when we are discussing eras in liver surgery going to intra operative phase one of the most important factors for carrying out a safe liver surgery with minimization of blood loss is low cvp cvp less than 5 cm h2o is recommended and this has to be taken care of with appropriate fluid management now remember analgesia in liver cases is tricky if these are usually rooftop incisions or subcostal incisions and the epidural if you are placing has to be a thoracic epidural but this can sometimes lead to a medical sympathectomy that can lead to hypotension and the requirement of low dose vasopressors which can exacerbate renal injuries so the current guidelines are more towards continuous wound infiltration and tap catheters as well as patient control analgesia vis a vis thoracic epidurals though they provide better pain relief that comes at a higher cost so thoracic epidurals may be a double edged sword and you have to use it very carefully very simple to use tap catheters and wound infiltration as well as patient control analgesia may be good alternative as per the era society recommendations important point is use minimal invasive surgery but that is based on expertise the extent of disease as well as the availability of resources for doing minimal invasive surgery for liver diseases prophylactic nasogastric tube is not recommended as far as our unit protocol is concerned we do keep nasogastric tube in major hypertectomy cases as well as cases that need bilioenteric anastomosis and we attempt to remove it on the first post operative day as per the guidelines the drains are to be avoided but we do put drain in major hypertectomy and cases with biliary enteric anastomosis but the drain is removed on the second or third post operative day after the patient has been started on liquids and is mobilized so these are some of the intra operative features that you have to take care of when performing liver surgery with the help of enhance recovery after surgery protocols or the eras protocols one of the most important factors that you need to be aware of in this slide is the cvp because liver transaction at low cvp is very important now coming to post operative phase early mobilization is very important as this is an upper abdominal surgery chest physiotherapy is also very important to avoid post operative lung infections and complications analgesia we have already discussed it has to be multimodal avoid nsaids and avoid long term opiates transdermal patches in our practice and experience do help in these patients they can be mobilized early as there are no iv drips attached to them and they also have less complication rate compared to intravenous or epidural routes 
early oral feeding usually liver surgery patients can be started on liquids on the first post operative day and they usually reach semi solid to soft diet by third or fourth post operative day like i said drain removal as early as possible and post operative nausea and vomiting prophylaxis two drugs are recommended dexamethasone at induction and ondansetron post operatively so these are some of the important post operative interventions in addition to what we have already discussed in the eras guidelines so you have seen some specific parameters that have been highlighted in this 2022 article if you want i'll share a link in the description below on the eras guidelines that have been published in 2022 on liver surgery so add these to your standardized eras template when you are implementing these guidelines for liver surgery very important as i have already discussed in the previous presentation also is audit because standardization is just the first step when you evaluate your data and you publish your outcomes and you discuss your findings this leads to continuous improvement in the guidelines the first eras guidelines in liver surgery were published in 2016 whereas the first eras guidelines were published in 2009 and what we see in 2022 is a very nice refinement of these guidelines and that has been possible only because a lot of experienced and advanced centers are auditing their data and publishing their findings so this is a very important point when it comes to implementing standardization in your practice so to summarize in this video we have seen the standard eras guidelines and we have seen the 2022 liver surgery eras update where we have focused on some specific pre operative intra operative and post operative parameters thank you